Now, after we're complete with our risk assessment, and we understand the value of what we're protecting, and we have an idea of the threats and the vulnerabilities, now what we want is a value. And value can come in two ways. It can be a qualitative value or a quantitative value. Now, the qualitative value is all about um, subjective sort of line of thought, gut feeling, uh, prioritization of the risks. So, for instance, if I'm throwing a picnic in two weeks, what's a threat? Uh, weather. All right, how big a potential for weather uh, to disrupt my picnic in the month of December? Well, that's pretty high. Right? That's qualitative analysis. That's based on my gut feeling. That's based on my experience. What I expect, that means uh, I'm doing a qualitative analysis. So when we're talking about high, medium, low probability, that's qualitative. Um, the Delphi technique, which is mentioned in this slide, means that as someone that's involved with risk analysis, I don't work alone. I have to talk to my subject matter experts, other members of my team, and I want their input. And a good way to get input from other team members is to allow them to input information anonymously. And when we're doing anonymous or asking for anonymous input, we're using the Delphi technique with the idea that people will be more honest if they can contribute anonymously. So that qualitative means of analyzing, analyzing risks we talk with our team members, our subject experts, we allow them to contribute anonymously if possible, and what we come up with is high, medium, and low rankings of our risk. Now that doesn't tell me how much money to spend, but it does help me prioritize. Uh, a lot of times when we're using qualitative analysis, we'll come up with something called the probability and impact matrix, or this severity and likelihood. Again, likelihood's just like probability, severity's like impact. And when we do this, what we're going to do is indicate certain risks have a very high severity and a high likelihood, some less of a severity, but still a relatively high likelihood. Some have a very low severity, but a very high likelihood. We're just kind of reading this chart, but the bottom line is this is really a, um, a subjective chart. Your organization is going to create this chart uh, based on your internal uh, structure. So nothing's written in stone about this chart, but very frequently we do have a diagram or some sort of visual clue that will help us understand which are the risks we need to focus our money on. So if you were to look at this screen and you see that we have a risk here that has a high severity and a high likelihood, that's a risk we better focus on quickly because that risk is going to have the highest potential for damage and create a lot of damage, so very important. Whereas if we have something with a very low potential likelihood and a low severity, we may choose not to spend as much money on that risk. So the qualitative analysis will guide us to what we really want to get to, which is the quantitative analysis. This requires more expertise, it requires more time, we're going to use calculations, we're going to use math um, to determine, I'm an English major, so using math is not always the, the greatest joy of my life, but we're going to use math, we're going to get the numbers, and we're going to do some fact-based analysis that will give us the numeric, ideally, the dollar value of a risk. That will then drive us into how much money we'll spend. So when we're doing quantitative analysis, we've got to figure out some pieces of information. Remember from earlier, we said the very first step when we're doing risk management is to identify and then evaluate our assets. So I'm going to look at an asset value as my first means of, of beginning quantitative analysis. I'm protecting a building that's $300,000. That's the value of the asset. Okay, just what's the asset worth? And when we come up with the asset value, remember, we don't just estimate hardware costs. We've got to think about all the things that go into giving an asset value, okay, which can be many intangibles. Uh, intangibles. Now, the next element, exposure factor. How much of that asset am I going to lose if the risk does materialize? So I've spent $10,000 on this picnic. If it rains, it'll be an 80% loss because 80% of the staff won't show up. We've determined that. Okay, that's my exposure factor. If we have $100,000 worth of data 
and 50% of it will be lost if a virus attacks. Well, that's a $50,000, I'm sorry, that's a 50% exposure factor, okay? Now, single loss expectancy, how much money will I lose each time this event happens? So we have $100,000 worth of data, I have a 50% exposure factor, my single loss expectancy is $50,000. Every time we have this compromise, I'll lose $50,000. But I'm probably not going to have this event happen every year, or maybe I will. Who knows? What's the type of threat? Annual rate of occurrence tells me how frequently per year this event will happen. Annual uh, uh, rate of occurrence. So that's the probability. How likely is this to happen? Exposure factor really is the impact, right? How much am I going to lose? Annual rate of occurrence is the probability. Ultimately, then, we want an annual loss expectancy. Okay? How much do I spend on this particular risk per year? All right, so we've already said I've got $100,000 worth of data, and I'll lose 50% of that data if there's a compromise. So that gives me a single loss expectancy of $50,000. But if this loss happens three times per year, well now I've got an annual loss expectancy of $150,000. I'm going to lose $50,000 three times a year, so that's an annual loss expectancy of one hundred fifty. Okay, so that's kind of how this works. I doubt you'll really have to do calculations, but you will need to understand the principles of quantitative analysis. You'll probably have to, on this test, answer a couple of questions. What does this term mean? Um, because, again, I cannot stress enough, this is one of the most important concerns going into developing our software, is understanding the appropriate amount of security. And I don't know what the appropriate amount of security is unless I truly understand the potential for loss. Remember, security will always cost me something. How much will it cost comes from quantitative analysis. All right, now, total cost of ownership. When we implement controls, how much money does it cost us to implement a control over its lifespan? So we might implement antivirus software that has an upfront cost of $5,000, but we have a maintenance fee of $1,000 every year. So we've got to figure that into the total cost of ownership. And then ultimately, when we look at how much this safeguard has saved us, how much money it's saved us, that's the return on investment. So for every dollar I spend, what did I get back? What did I save? So that's return on investment. And all of these are very important when it comes to really understanding loss potential. So just a, a little bit of an overview, again, to get my single loss expectancy, take the asset value times exposure factor. And again, this could pop up on the test. So I would take a few minutes to memorize these terms and then these formulas. But ultimately, if you don't get so caught up in memorizing the formulas and you just think it through, you know, every time this happens, it costs me $10,000. It happens four times a year. What's my annual loss? $40,000. You don't have to get so tangled up in memorizing a formula for that.